Ready to start understanding how to hit the rotational shot put and transition to big throws? We're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we're gonna go behind the scenes, another three-day training camp, and we're gonna to look at kind of some key tweaks start to finish. Devin Martin, he had come in, and we were looking at a few things. When we did day one, we're, like you said, we've talked about before with the throwing chain reaction, we're gonna plug every athlete in. We're gonna evaluate and go through their progression. So first thing that we taught him, he was too far forward in his throw, which is gonna make the reverse and the efficiency of the finish compromise. Second thing we look at is how we move into that. We're adjusting things like the rewrap and then when we went to the full throw we're looking at the sweep action and how he's setting up his chain reaction so the key thing here was that he tended to be too far, far forward the rewrap was lacking somewhat and he would shift and so we were trying to show him how that timing would work and how that would change and that was a really key thing and this was a good example with that rewrap he's too active with the upper body and that had to tie into his sweep leg issue and that was something that we figured out all these things in day one so then as we plug him through his six pillars in day two we would start to apply the fixes and the changes I, I know. that was a lot better not bad as we start day two, we're immediately going to be focusing on how he's going to be loading the delivery leg and being able to rotate and move into the finish much more effectively. We're going to slow things down. We're going to be more mechanical. We're teaching him how to stay longer and connect to the shot. You can see he's still kind of going a little too far forward and coming over the board. So we did some preloaded throws. So this is where we're going to have the knees and hips preloaded into the direction of the finish. And what we're going to do is show him how to move the hip in time to get the lower body just that little bit ahead feel the block and apply so that he's extending to the board without coming out but you're going to see in this video he kept coming out so then the next thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to be putting those things together moving into the middle of the ring and stepping in we like to do step-ins it's a very deliberate movement it's kind of like a choppy or south african in the sense that we're going to really walk and emphasize how to get the hip ahead at this point here we're able to start looking at how he's activating the shoulder and the sweep and how that's leading to him turning the upper body too quickly ahead and that's why you're going to kind of notice that his hips are going to kind of break shift and that's what's causing a lot of that shift to go forward so this was a big movement day <gasps> that looks pretty good day three we're gonna try to say we've got a ton to work on he's got to go home what's the game plan and we're gonna put some final touches on the things that we address on day two and the mechanical day and then we make it super rhythmical we want to focus on the rhythm put it together make it fluid so that he can feel the difference think about less and apply and that's the big difference here is that on day two we're really being mechanical day three again we're really trying to include that more smooth fluid motion and so you're gonna see see he's starting to move you're going to see that upper body kind of rolling again that has to do partially with his sweep and a combination of how he's holding the left arm so let's take a look at how it went over the course of three days you're going to again notice these subtle little changes you're going to notice that when he starts he's going to be creating a little bit different position and in the mechanical day and the rhythmical day because we were addressing the issues we're seeing a lot more closer similarities so as we break down the six pillars you're going to see these slight little shifts as he comes from here now he's starting to attack his sprint so he here you're going to notice the subtlety of the block leg. It's a little closer. It's getting down a little faster and just allowing him to stay back and kind of square up and get into the throw a little bit better. And we're going to compare first day thrower to a first week thrower to a multi-year 17-year-old uh, and a multi-year 18-year-old. And you're going to see kind of the evolution. And you're going to see that they're all working on the same thing. So one of the things if you're new to the channel or if you're new to our IGTV is that the way we look at the throw here is what we call as a throwing chain reaction system. We break the throw down into six pillars. The reason being is that the throw happens very quickly. Brand new thrower on day one, you're going to notice is going to be right around two seconds and an advanced under 18 thrower is going to be throwing about one and a half seconds. And he's throwing around 70 feet and the first thrower is throwing around 25 feet. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we're going to be looking at the throw in terms of, because it happened so fast, was what we call our six pillars. We're going to look at basically the start 
start and we're going to look at what each pillar does, right? Each pillar basically is a location in the ring. We have an objective. What are we trying to do at that point of the throw? And then we have positions to be able to achieve the, the objective. The first thrower up, we're going to look at a young thrower. This was his first day. We're going to look at thrower number one, and we'll just quickly refer to these as one, two, three, and four. Kind of just let everything roll. You're going to notice again, the speed of the throw. Again, the young thrower is the first day, so he doesn't like quite know how to reverse, but you're going to notice the movement is pretty good. So this is the benefit of taking the system, how we break down the throw and how we teach it to a young athlete. So now you're going to see it. We go through our pillar one, pillar two, and now we're looking at how we kind of move our pillar three, pillar four, pillar five, and pillar six. So let's look at how that throw looks when we break it down. So one of the first things that we want to do is we have to understand that setting up the throw is really critical and that's what we refer to as our pillar one position. As we've talked about with like the discus with the rotational shot, we still have to create separation and stretch reflex and one of the key things is that we're setting up this entry axis right? And so how we're going to be able to move around that. This thrower number two is only had just made the switch. He'd been throwing for roughly about a week with the rotational shot. Now you're going to notice that as we move the athletes to what we refer to as our pillar two, you're going to notice that we're going to be talking about how we move around the axis. This is going to be the key, how we are going to be able to get the body around here. So the position of this hip and this shoulder, right? As we look, so if I look at thrower number four, we look at his entry side hip under the entry shoulder. Shoulder, we're going to notice these are the key things. You're going to notice this is one of the things that the new thrower had learned very well. You're going to see that thrower number one on his first day, right? He's got all the key concepts. So what we refer to on the first pillar is setting up the chain reaction. We're going to set up everything so the body reacts to be able to move into these positions a whole lot easier. Learning how to move the feet, the arms, coordinating the lower body and the upper body. These are the things that are very tricky for the athlete. Here, you're going to notice that thrower number one in some ways almost has a better entry hip than thrower number three who's throwing multiple years. So this is where, as the athletes are going to be getting older, thrower number two is the same thing, but it was, again, his first week throwing with the rotational shot, but hitting a very nice position and looking at where that hip is underneath that shoulder. So these are all some very good things. As we do this alignment, the point of this is that alignment is going to help you as a thrower move through. So what we want to do is make sure that you understand as you go from pillar one to pillar two, setting up maximum power is the goal, right? So we want to set that ability to create all that speed and balance, and that's what the, the object of our pillar pillar two. So pillar three is where we basically talk about how we're going to drop into the throw and apply speed. So we're going to drop in, we're going into the center of the throw towards the direction, the throwing direction, and we're going to be trying to increase as much speed and power as possible. Point here is we're going to be looking at counterbalancing. We have the sweep, we have the, the counterbalance arm. This is going to be real important to the rotational path into the center as you apply speed. And you're going to notice this thrower here is, has a really nice counterbalance system system as does thrower number three and number four. And so you're going to notice that our week one and our week two, they, these are going to be things that they're going to be continuing to develop. So as we create speed into the middle, we kind of work on our pillar four. We're going to do, this is where we call we're transitioning from the sprint leg to the delivery leg. This is where the upper body is going to kind of pause with lower body is wrap. And this is what we refer to as bringing it all together so that you're increasing that rotational speed. You're going to notice where they all land. So no, Number three kind of goes a little too far and he's landing at three o'clock where we want to have that foot landing closer back to one o'clock. Obviously, if you look at number one, we'd be talking up here. Here's your 12 o'clock thrower number two. Again, really nice job hitting his rewrap, getting everything here, pulling the left foot uh, into the power position. So we're going to set that up. So now we go into here. This is what we're, we refer to as our traditional power position and we call this locking down power. We want to have both legs loaded up so that we can create that nice rotation rotational speed into our delivery and we're going to see that delivery side going this way out and around into our throw. You're going to see that nice long balance arm that's going to take the long path of the upper body to allow the thrower to come into the throw and now you're going to set up that nice big squared up position. So you're going to notice that thrower number four has a real nice line. You're going to see everything's pretty straight through the back and up through the head. You're going to notice that thrower number three is kind of pulling off and 
And so that's going to be some strength number thrower number one. Again, day one, heck of a great job, really great position. And you can see he's pulling off a little bit. That's going to drop that elbow a touch. Number two, just a smidge um, off, but a pretty nice delivery position and a nice elbow and a nice strike. Our next three-part series coming up, we're going to go through each thing, go through a little bit more detail. But the key thing is how do you get thrower number one this good quality of movement in just the first day? You can imagine where this athlete it's going to be in multiple years. So the idea was, we, again, we broke down the throw into six pillars. It's a system that everybody can understand. So whether you're a beginning thrower or whether you're, you know, number one or number four, you know, the top thrower in the U.S. his particular year and one of the best throwers in high school history is we're working on generally the same things. But as the concepts and the positions become more learned, the details become more critical. But the first things first is when you're approaching your throwing, the why that we created the system, why we're putting out this video is to help you understand that if you don't have a structure to follow and you're not clear on the objectives that you're supposed to be achieving throughout the throw from start to finish, you're going to have a much harder time understanding the throw. You can potentially develop a lot of unnecessary habits that are going to hold you back and limit your progress. But a pillar two start is where we're going to set our throw. What we're going to do is squat straight down. We're going to turn this foot to about 45 degrees. We're maintaining the hips. So we hinge. Notice I don't turn the hips. And so what I do is I hinge to about 45. I bring the chest forward on an angle here. So I'm in that point of pillar two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind on the angle. I can't set back up. I'm on the angle. So you'll see this line here. You'll see how my hips are generally centered. The knee is not pushing this way. I'm straight down, turned, upper body comes over. And then what it does is it forces the long radius, right? And so I feel this. And Tyson Jones, who threw 71, eight and three quarters multiple times and won New Balance Nationals in 2018. We had a point in the fall where we probably spent about three weeks where that's all he did was pillar twos. He just got feeling that pillar two position, pillar two position, the timing of how to keep everything moving and driving in. And that's what set him up for that really good consistency, dozen throws in competition over 70 feet. So very consistent. Again, we're gonna review. The pillar two is quite simple. We squat straight down we turn the foot to 45 we angle the chest out and then we get here and we open we wind on the angle so we feel that hip lock like a kneeling throw and then we work the arm around so we're gonna feel the hinge and you're gonna feel that now I'm on balance heads over the knee I'm on double loaded legs I'm gonna be able to turn through turn through and lift okay so hopefully that feels good try it pillar twos usually people hate them because what it's really showing you is are you loading and moving around the axis the easier it gets the better the axis the more difficult it feels and cumbersome the more you're absolutely doing it incorrect that's a quick thing we have more details inside the system on how to do a pillar two start but start here try that and in the next video we're going to put the whole throw together and we'll help you again identify your drills and you will hopefully be feeling a good solid full throw and congrats on a big week here we go